whether you use a coarse material or a fine material. If you're training bonsai, a very coarse soil mixture is better. You get more aeration and the roots will grow faster. Once you get a developed tree, like many of the trees I'll show you outside, everything changes. You want to squeeze out some of the air to slow them down. So a finer grade particle size is preferred. And it also lets you put them in a smaller pot too, the smaller stuff. Yes. Yep. You still have those little tiny plants nearby? Because not everybody saw them. I think they were amazing. There was a thread on bonsai nut yesterday. Show us your smallest trees. So I had these small pots. No, no. Show, let us see your hand. So we get a size of the, uh, a sense of the size there. That is a small tree. How about smaller? Okay. Okay. Those are sterling silver bones I can see. And, and here's a small one. Look at the size of that, people. Can, can we ask how old those are? Well, the pots are maybe 20 years old. Oh. Yeah, not the trees. <laughs> and yesterday. They're for small accent plants. Is this a quince? No, it's a uh, dwarf Japanese rose. Anybody have questions? Remember, you got to raise your hands because I can't see you otherwise. Okay, Rick. Rick Johnstone, unmute. I imagine uh, as small as they are, they, they become more high maintenance. Yes. You water like 80 times Most a day. Most of them are kept in a tray of grass. Not if you have them sitting in water. Just constant yeah. moisture. I've got many, right, I've got many larger trees which I keep sitting in water. You'll see them as we go around. And certain trees like extra moisture, like porcelain berries, hydrangea, wisteria. And uh, when it gets hot, and a lot of my trees are on the pot bound side rather than freshly transplanted because I can control the size better. It takes more watering and sometimes they wilt, but that's why I do it here. Should we walk outside? Are you guys ready? Uh, yes, we are. Hi. Hi, hi Sue. Hello. All right. You're gonna have to mute your picture. Okay. Raise your hand if you've got a question. And uh, you know, then you'll unmute your picture. So we're, we're going to now use what, uh, Marie's iPad. Now you're gonna, okay. They got to flip it. Ah. Somehow. Okay, that looks like it's Okay. Flipped. Okay. Kathy's nice. We don't need to see her. We need to see. Right. Yeah. How is it? Bob. Oh, here. That one. No, top one. That's what I hit. Okay, you got it. Well, you got it. Kathy, what are you seeing now? I am seeing... I am seeing... Uh, We're seeing the garden. Right, right in the garden. Let me see. Where are we? Right. Somebody's got something on. There, there, there we go. go. Okay. 
No, let me try Go this. Ahead. So you take it. Yeah, let me try this. It sounds like Marie. Okay, can you see? Um, I... <clears throat> not, no, Marie's iPad is not, it's still on mute. Oh, it's on mute, okay. Yeah, take it off mute. No, it's off mute. Oh, wait a second. Okay, now we see. Can you hear? I can hear. I can hear. How about everybody else? Nod your heads, please. Can you hear? I can hear. Okay. Uh, you've got to, uh, Jim, you've got to undo, uh, put you on mute. <laughs> Rick is on mute. Okay. Yes. My name is Bill. Okay. My name is Bill. I like to welcome you to our garden. It's not important that you see me, but I want to show you some trees. If you have any questions, just speak up. Well, nod your head, raise your this hand. This is the main display area. Wow. Well, I've got a couple indoor bonsai. How hot is it there right now? At Eugenia. The what? How hot is it there right now? Oh. Low 80s. Low 80s. We had 99 and 97 the last couple of days. Very unusual. Some maple, pretty good roots. Yeah. Yeah. About 45 year cutting. And the container's 45 years old too. So they're matched. <laughs> Here's a interesting pine. Very small needles. Gallery view. If you want to see something different, let me know. If you have any questions, we still have people coming in. We've got uh, fifteen so people so far. That's okay, good. that's wonderful. That's a dwarf wisteria. Here's a ginkgo. How many people know, know what this tree is? Ken has a question. Ken, okay. unmute. Ken, unmute. Up on the right corner of your uh, picture. Okay, I want to know how often does your, your wisteria bloom? The dwarf one? Yeah. Never. Never blooms? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Boone has one I saw bloom once. It's a Miletia microphylla. It's not really wisteria. Okay. But the foliage is just like wisteria. And it's grown to be displayed in the summer to give you a cool feeling. But I did see small blue flowers. Only once. I told my friend in Japan, they said if they'd have it in Japan, they'd be millionaires. <laughs> That's a Buddha's finger citron. Yuck. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. <laughs> yes, but I mean, it's a gross looking. Okay, Paul has some, a question. Okay. Unmute, Paul. I on your ginkgo tree, is there any way to reduce the size of the leaves or do you just got to go with the variety that you have? I brought well, one down from Virginia and the leaves always remain big no matter what I do. You leaf cut it? Yeah, once, but it, it didn't, didn't like it here in, in the hot weather. Oh, you know, maybe so. it's too hot down there. But if you leaf cut, you do get smaller leaves. J just cut the leaves? You, yeah. 
Uh, okay. I, I, I defoliated it one time, and, and it, yeah. it took a long time because of the heat to come back. Yeah, sometimes we can do it twice a year. When you, when okay. you say cut the leaves, you cut the leaves in half then? Leave the petiole. Pardon? You cut the leaves in half when you say cut the leaves? No, take the entire leaf off. Really? Bigger species. Yeah. Here's a maple. That's an air layer top off another tree. Uh, what else? Here's a Korean hornbeam. We got fertilizer balls all over. Here's a good tree with weeds. If the weeds didn't grow, I'd be worried. What kind of weeds are those? I like them. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you want them? <laughs> we, we got plenty of weeds down here, believe me. When I started this, it was less than my finger. And I got a, see the pink ribbon in there someplace? There's a bud there. I waited 40 years to get a bud there. I finally got a bud. Here's a forest of larks, but that's one tree, sinuous style. All the roots are connected. Jimmy, put your picture on mute, please. No, there's, there's noises in your background. Oh, okay. hey, can people type in questions? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> One time I've had it where people type in questions and somebody reads them off. Okay, can we do that? I don't know. Uh, Let me see. Can you people want to consider typing a question? You, you click on the chat. Somebody is not muted. And I think that Fred, Fred, Okay, yeah, he's muted now. Right, Ken? I'm muted. No, you're not. Up on the top right of your picture, there's a little blue more sign. If you go, go to your, put your cursor on your picture and up on the top right of your picture, there is a mute sign or a more sign. Blue, blue square with dots. Click on that. Now I'm muted. No, you're not. <laughs> we still hear you. Is a chrysanthemum. Ah, Chinese, Chinese quince. Can I ask a question about the chrysanthemum? Sure. All right, you had a blog a while back about a chrysanthemum bonsai. Is that that? Yes, this is one of them. Okay, now, yep. we're not talking about the chrysanthemum plant that we buy in Home Depot, are we? No, this is more of a woody perennial. Oh. It's also called Montauk Daisy. And it cuts us back to nothing about a week ago. Two new buds. Uh-huh. So this is the original, and I've got three other pieces from it.
but the original one was about nine years old from Yoshimura's father. I like maples. You have a lot of different maples too, don't you? A lot of what? Different maples. Yeah, these are trident. Ken, you're still not you're still not muted. I'm not muted. No. Thank you. Put your put your put your cursor. Never mind. <laughs> put your cursor on your picture. Okay. All so right. In the video. top right, there Mute should my be. Video. No, on the top right, there's a little blue square with some dots in it. Click on that. And that should mute you. Ken, you're muted. He's got the red microphone. Okay. All right. All right, where are we now? <laughs> For Kathy. Rick had a question, Kathy. Okay, Rick, unmute. Thank you yeah, for your question? support. <clears throat> yes, a couple things. Uh, number one is your wisteria in water. Hello. Yes, do keep wisteria in water. So your yours out there is uh, sitting in a little tray water because I air layered one from my mom's plant in Virginia, and that's the way I have it now out here. It bloomed for me once and hasn't since, and that's been about three years. So I guess my question is, uh, will it ever bloom again? Marie's iPad is off. There. No. Yeah, now it's on. You okay? Yep, now we're okay. Okay, this is the main display area. <laughs> now my studio, where we teach, is in here. Uh, before you go there, Bill? Yeah. Could you just show them that those branches up here? We're air layering, rough bark maple. Kathy? Yeah? Um, this is a picture of one of the trees and uh, the air layering that's currently going on uh, at Bill's place. Now, this is a special variety of Japanese maple. It has rough bark. Oh. And every other year, it produces seeds. Of course, they all won't be true, but some are. Okay, here's the, from the back of the studio. And when we teach, we got students where the blue carpet is. And the table here. So I change this periodically. But the main focal point when I want to share a tree, is I isolate it and I put it in this alcove. Now that's a butterfly Japanese maple. It's got pink, white, and green leaves. This is a special summer display I designed for your club. It's summer, so it's hot. So notice that the table is bamboo. And the scroll, I don't know if you can see it. Double rainbow for a summer. We 
hope to get rain. <clears throat> and on the right is a single dwarf daylily. I cut all the flowers off except the one. That's all I needed. So this has appreciate bonsai. You isolate it, clean it up, plain background, and display it. Now the special post is a weeping elm tree I grew. On the other side, we have books, magazines, pots, and over here, this is a dwarf mulberry with red fruit. This one was displayed in Tokyo a couple years ago. It needs a Daisa. I have one. <laughs> and I said, of course. I sent it to Japan. They took it out. They said it's more of a Suibon stone than a Daisa stone. Horn beam. Just young hornbeam seedlings. Individually, they're not that good, but collectively, you can appreciate them. Pine tree. Here, bougainvillea. Some, somebody asked if you had uh, tropicals there. Two or three. They're difficult. And I'll tell you why. You bring a tree from Florida, from some, some tropical area, and it's beautiful. It does great. Then over winter, it goes downhill. When you put it back outside, it regains vigor, but never the same vigor as when it had originally, where it was growing outside in Florida or the tropical area. A lot of Florida are larch and maples. We really like your buttonwood and ficus. So this is the main display area. Okay. We have a question. Oh, this is interesting. We okay. have a question, Paul. How, how do you feel about the other direction, bringing uh, northern trees down south? Uh, do you have any suggestions on what can be done? Wh which trees can be brought down here? No, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> you have to talk to more experienced bonsai people from your area. This is a dwarf cork bark Chinese elm. And this is a cutting from one of my bonsai. But right next to it, where that Austin stone is, I had a Japanese golden and black pine. I gave it to my friend. When he You're breaking up. He hit one of the surface roots. Uh, so I took the roots. Your, break, your voice is breaking up. Here's, here's the root. Off the, oh, here's the root. Can you check the, the battery? Need a battery? Uh, I don't know if it's battery or if it's uh, uh, service. Well, I was running. I think it's okay. It's just okay. It keeps cutting in and out. How about now? Can you see us now? Yeah. Yeah. Maple. This is a sales area. And trying to present an illusion of age, it doesn't make sense to keep the containers indoors. So they're all kept outside. Patina. The sales area. Okay. 
Jack, your computer is uh, on. Go on. All right, there you Uh, Jack, your computer is, is uh, taking over. Hi, Gail, you have a question? Yes, I, um, can you see the text that I've typed? Are you looking at that? Uh, yeah. And I don't know if he could, if Marie's iPad could go full screen. Yeah, but everybody has to take put their computer on speaker view. Do you have yours on speaker view? Well, right now I do. Good. But uh, Jack's computer is on and he's gone away. I'm here. Okay, but uh, w what we really want to see is uh, Marie's iPad. It's right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want me to do it? Okay. Can you see? Yeah. It would help if uh, everybody was muted, uh, including yours, if you're not talking, because you're picking up background noises, and I all I see, see is you. Oh, okay. And do. It's not going to work because the two of you are going to use Wi Fi. Oh. Can't log into both. Okay. It have to be Wi-Fi? I think it does. Are you having trouble again? Yeah. Isn't technology wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> Can be. You know, There it goes. Got it there? Yeah. Can you see it? No. Yeah, I think it's Could it have to do with the distance that you're getting away from your source of Wi-Fi? Maybe. Okay, okay, Rick has a question. It's back up now. Rick, unmute. Any questions? Yes, I wanted to ask about your Trident Maple. I have one which I got from an auction from a, a member who passed a while back. And all it ever seems to do, it only grows for like three months out of the year. Shoots up straight uh, shoots. And I cut them back in order to get ramification and it smells. Is, is, do I, is that what I have, a trident maple? And you're frozen. That's not... That's not... It's not like a ficus, which grows all year round. I, I missed everything that you said because- Try to make- Go ahead. Try to make- The Rochester bonsai, the head of the bonsai. Uh, the, mm -hmm. Rochester is the bonsai people. Okay. 
the bandwidth is low. Did you get the answer for the? No, somebody else cut uh, in. One more time with the try to maple. Meeting. One more time, if you don't mind. It, it, for about, sure, it grows for about three months, and that's it. Months, and that's it. It doesn't grow all the time. About three months, and that's. Yeah. Right. That's what mine does, and, and it has a peculiar odor to it, yes? No. Mine does. No. I've been growing, I've been growing Trident Mables for almost 30 years, uh, 60 years. Uh, well, th this is what I was told it was. It looks like it has the proper leaf shape, but uh, I oh. get near it and I snip it, and it has a very uh, pungent. Sent okay, you don't have a trident maple. Oh, what do uh, I have? It's in a verbena family. It's different. Oh, okay. It's called Premna microphylla, maybe. It's not a. It's not a maple. It's called huh. Niwa. Oh, let me check. It's called Niwa Kaide in Japanese. Oh, I don't think I'll remember that. Well, let me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look. Niwa. Uh, pictures. I put down one side. It's very popular for Shohan bonsai. Okay. And all. Oh, so perhaps I should cut it back. Yes. Right now it stands about a foot tall, I suppose. You can cut it back to maybe two or three inches. Whoa. Uh, if you send me a message to my email, I'll look it up. I can't find it here. Niwa Kaide Bonsai. Show him. No. Uh, garden trident maple, maybe. Garden trident maple. I mean, the, the leaf structure is just like a trident maple, but the scent yeah. was very strange. A little lighter green and thinner yes. leaf. Yes, it is a thin leaf. Um, it's also called leaf? stinky maple. Whose maple? Stinky. Like it smells. <laughs> that would be accurate. Uh, I might be able to Google it with that. But it acts like the Trident, only grows yeah. for about three months and whatnot. Right. But you say it's part of the Verbena family. Yeah, Verbena family. Now that one should grow most of the year. In Kyoto, it's used an awful lot. Oh. And for show in bonsai. Very interesting. Learn something new every day. We all do. If you want to. Uh, do you have an email address or a number to text you to? I can uh, send it to you, Rick. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, well, and, I don't, and I don't call those things weeds. I call it indigenous landscaping. I feel right. better about it that way. Yeah. A dwarf pine tree in the middle of a uh, middle of a cornfield is a weed. Just an unwanted plant. Oh, you know the artillery fern? You have that, right? I grow it. I like it. They are pretty when they you can put them in a little side pot. They are kind of right. pretty. Right. 
usually it shows up. I can look up inside. I'll be happy to send you the name. Okay, more questions. I well, have one, Bill. And at the club meetings, uh, you guys are awful silent. I have a question about maples. <clears throat> I know Rick has a maple there, a stinky maple. Uh, but can I raise uh, trident maples down here in Southwest Florida? And if so, how do I take care of it? How do I? You're asking the wrong person. I don't know. I think it's tough. Louise Leister or Mike Sullivan would know. They've had experience, even Mike Rogers. But okay. they need the cold period. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, I have a question, Bill. Yeah. Okay, I, I read your bios, and there's lots of material about you on the internet. Wikipedia. Uh, did you check yeah. me out? Oh, yeah. I certain, certainly did. Okay. And uh, one of the things that uh, struck me was uh, you got very interested at a very early age. Yes. And I'm curious as to what aspect of uh, the idea of bonsai that really struck you in such a way that you stuck with it for so long and have become, you know, good at it. The, the shape, originally. I was uh, 11 years old. My mother was a expert rose grower and tuberous begonia grower. So gardening was around. In fact, when we grew up in Illinois, she lost her rose garden. My father went out and bought all new roses to replace them, cost $75. I thought he was crazy. How could anybody spend $75 for plants? <laughs> so I got a book and a tree and killed it and just kept on going from there. I can't hear you. Unmute. Okay. Okay. What, what are you paying now for a plant out of curiosity? The sales tax is far more than $75. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Even pots. The pot I showed you, the uh, handmade special pot was over $3,000. Ooh. Just for the pot. Number Kathy, one pot, man, custom made for this tree. Kathy, can I ask a question? Yeah, I can hear you. Do you do uh, YouTube videos on you know, any training aspects? There are several videos on YouTube of me. But I haven't, well, maybe there's one on Maples. There's a few. Bonsai Empire, check Bonsai Empire too. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. In the north, I have a question about uh, my uh, unsuccessful um, trying to germinate seeds and, and, uh, and uh, also get uh, cuttings to root. Uh, what materials do you do to encourage uh, um, germination and also um, cuttings, uh, small cuttings, um, as far as the material and the frequency of, of uh, watering? Uh, I, I, my attempt has always been to to keep the material uh, damp and not wet. Is this working? Yes. Okay. I want to try something. I'm trying to plug this. Uh, it'll last for a while. Okay. Why don't you bring it into the greenhouse? Okay. Oh, maybe I can do it. So I need you to hold something. All right. We're going to the heated greenhouse. I'm doing mispropagation. Oh, maybe we can do it this way. When the theory is these stay in the full sun, 
manufacture food. But when the leaves dry out, this electronically dries out. You see the water? The mist comes on. Now when the mist gets too heavy, it just turned it off. So if it's windy or sunny, it goes several times. And It has about three weeks. Dwarf maples. Three weeks from seed? No, no, ice. But ice. This is two weeks. Ash is ready to be potted up. Jacqueline Hillier Elm. That's not bad for two weeks. What's your what's your media? That what are you rooting them in? What are you rooting them in? Can you repeat that? Oh, rooting. What are you rooting them in? Spag, uh, pro mix, fifty percent sphagnum, fifty percent coarse perlite. Okay. Now I use vermiculite. I use vermiculite. Well, that kind of that packs down. If you don't have a mist system, you got to keep them moist. Okay. So you might want to add some more organic material. Okay. Okay. Or peat. I did. It's good. Yeah, the sanctum. And what, what was your media there, medium? 50% peach, 50% perlite. Okay, very good. Vermiculite packs down. We're gonna pot them up today. Uh, and the thing that makes it absolutely disgusting to me is it's about a 100% success rate here. Uh, well, far far from what uh, I've been experiencing. Yeah. I'm surprised. Jack, ask him about what kind. Of, what does he start his seeds in then? Oh, seeds would be um, more sand, more gritty material, and seeds often get a damping off of fungus. So you put your media. A small layer of sand, seeds, and more sand on top, or turfus. Turfus is good. Okay. Should be kind of sterile, because as emerging seedlings germinate, they get fungus, damping off. It's called. Okay. Very good. But okay, thanks. usually, I get the seed and I plant it, leave it outside all winter. It comes up in spring. More natural than many people do it in the refrigerator. You can do that. It works. <laughs> How many people you got, Kathy? We've got, right now we've got 12. We had 15. Okay. All right. Okay, Gail, you have a question? Yes. Would you um, start seeds when you start seeds? I know you said sand. Would you water it with the fungus side? Yes, the first time. Okay. Yeah, Dacanil or Captan. Also, if you have a sick tree, would it probably needs more oxygen and water than, um, I think a lot of people, I'm one of them, would probably just put more fertilizer on it, but that isn't what it needs. I no. saw a video where it needs more oxygen. Right. And I, and I heard that, I said that you could use um, peroxide, like a 3% and dilute it. I don't know. I would use a coarser soil, like maybe super coarse perlite, and make sure you put it in a round pot, 
not a square or rectangular, round pond. The okay. roots round easier than if they hit the corner and you have to change direction. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Tell them about the cancellation of uh, the exhibition. Oh, the U.S. National Bones Exhibition, unfortunately, had to be postponed until next year. There's so much regulations and quarantines, it would be very difficult and unsafe for the people to come. So we canceled it until September 2021, same weekend. I can't hear you, Kathy. Okay. Hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> That'll give our plants another year to develop. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, logo, the logo tree is a crab apple. Last year, we plucked up all the flowers. So it flowered profusely this spring, and it did. And I want to show you the, let me turn it around. It's loaded with fruit. Fruit? Bill, I saw one oh, of your oh. videos and it was absolutely beautiful because you had the crab apple tree all in bloom. It was yes. awesome. That's this one. So last year for the exhibition, the logo was this tree in fruit. Next year, it's gonna be the same tree in flower. Can, can you time the uh, flowering and the fruiting of that tree so that it'll correspond with the, uh, the uh, bonsai show? We well, can't do much with the flowering because it flowers in spring. The fruit, you can't do anything about it. It, it. it produces the fruit when it wants to, the color. Usually October, but let me show you. Can you see the fruit? That's the poster for this year. But next year will be different. So do you take a picture of it when it's in flower for the uh, logo? Oh yeah, it's all done. Yeah. Posters, that's beautiful. Best time, I dug it in 1969. Can't hear you. Jack, you're on mute. Unmute, Jack. Uh oh. Unmute, Jack. Hmm. Did we lose them? Yeah. Ask to unmute. Jack. Jack, you're on mute. We can't hear you, Jack. He's also deaf. <laughs> I think he knows. It looks like he's trying to figure it out. <laughs> Ask to unmute. I did. Jack, unmute. You, we can't hear you. Uh, 
These things are so frustrating. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> Cute dog, Susan. Hi, Gary. I, I I don't know what to do here. I can't unmute him. Kathy, what if you call them? That's a good idea. Thank you. I also wonder if he can see the chat. Can anybody see the chat? I can see it, but I don't know if anybody else can. Well, it says to everyone here, so I've chatted, but. Hey, uh, tell Jack that his computer is on mute and we can't hear anything. We know that. And oh. we're hitting the unmute button and nothing's happening. Oh. Yeah. It's you. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, I hear you now. I hear you on the phone. Okay. All right. Can you, what do you see? Uh, a forest? I see a very little picture. Gail, you're making, you're on. Okay, now we're all silent. No. I'm trying. I can't get far enough away with the phone. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Mute yourself. I'm, I'm wondering if our meeting has ended <laughs> by itself. Can you stop it? Is this divine intervention? I think so. It's beginning to look like it, doesn't it? Kathy, I was just wondering if perhaps as the owner of the meeting, if maybe you might have accidentally hit mute. Because okay, you can mute anybody, you know. Marie's iPad is trying to join again. I've got to shut my phone off. How about now? Now, yes. Okay, what happened is <laughs> we were using the laptop like an iPad, touching the screen. But you need the but you need the mouse to do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is a European olive. Can you All see? All right, it? folks, we're back. That's an olive. It was a stump seven years ago from uh, Spain. And here's a Dawn Redwood Forest. How about some questions? Anybody have a question? What is this forest? What was that forest? Dawn Redwood, Meta Sequoia. It looks like bald cypress, but it isn't. 
Okay, it does. Yeah. The bark is different, the leaves are slightly different. How do you take care of that? Do you prune it back a lot or what? Pinch, like this. Pinch, okay. A lot of pinch in there. It's like larch. The more you pinch, the bushier it becomes. Looks good. So you're just pinching the very ends. You're not taking any branches? Oh, you do that. That's for design purposes or shaping. That's mostly in spring. But this one's been in a pot for maybe 15, 20 years. Would you, would you pinch a bald cypress that way? I don't grow bald cypress. They're not hardy here. Do the, uh, the uh, quail lose their leaves in the winter? Yes, it turns orange and drops its leaves. Very similar to the cypress. Right, hmm. right. Well, but, maybe we should try the same uh, techniques on the cypress down here. Try, somebody try pinching some of the tips off and see what happens. But the leaves are wider. Yeah. How many times this year did you pinch that back? Continuously. Continuously. That's why I have it here near the front entrance to the garage. I can get it all the time. And how often do you repot that? When it needs it. Not on a schedule. Okay. Uh, maybe four or five years. Oh, really? I don't, okay. I don't transplant that often. It disturbs the growth. If, it, if it's draining and growing well, I leave it alone. Okay. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. <laughs> but then you might have in the future. Is that a general rule for most bone sites? That it ain't broken, don't fix it? My rule. That's what I do. Now, I do have to confess that sometimes you get broken pots because the root pressure is so forceful. It just breaks the pots. Yeah, I've had that with desert roses. Yeah, especially if a pot has an incurving lip, then you got to be a little bit extra careful. Oh, let's see. <coughs> hey, Bill, I. So a blog, I follow your blogs. Yeah. And uh, quite a while back, you did a very wonderful blog on uh, selecting pots for one of your maples. Yeah. You had 10 pots that you could considered and you went through each one and talked about the pros and cons. I sent that on to the club members yeah. because I thought that was a wonderful blog. Uh, but you know, most of us don't have 10 pots yeah. <laughs> that, that you know, we might consider. Uh, but we all end up with a bunch of pots and no plants in yeah. them. The selection was difficult because this is a box stand with the different shelves. Uh -huh. OK, that's the most difficult type of bonsai display. All the pots have to be different, different shape, different color. And the colors, you don't want two blue pots and two red pots, four rectangle unglazed. So it's nice to have similar pots that you can just pop them into for the display. That's something I did not know about those displays. Very difficult, the most difficult. Okay. They have to have the, the same volume. This has to be about the same as that. It's the same visual mass. The direction, actually, that's in front of the tree. But I don't want two trees above each other. So I turn it around like that. The most difficult type of display. The size, species, they all have to be different. The trees have to be a different color like a red fruity tree with a red tree and leaf. It's all gotta be different. 
you don't want to, you want to avoid duplication for fine quality bonsai display. That's why this tokenoma took a long time to create this alcove display. Okay, I did have, for the past few days, a different scroll. You see what this is? Bamboo. Bamboo. And I had it here, but I couldn't use it today because the maple is on a bamboo table. And here you have three bamboos. The scroll, the table, and the slab. So it depends on how deep, how involved you want to do this. Everything should be different. Notice there's only one flowering tree here, or one fruiting tree. We try to avoid duplication. All right. Can I help you? If you didn't know who to call to make an appointment, do we got to make an appointment to come? Yeah, but go look around outside. Outside? Yeah. Somebody just walked in, sorry. But notice that the color picks up the blue there and the blue here. Ah, yeah. okay. And the rainbow is going towards the daylily. Is that a daylily you buy like in a department store or nursery? Yeah, it's a dwarf one. Just dwarf one. Oh, it bloom? Oh. Yeah, it does bloom. Very expensive. But with tissue culture, they overpropagated it. And it's very inexpensive now. And one of it mutated, and it's called Mini Stella or something. But Stella Doro was the original one. Or Is that Stella Dior? That's a that's a Stella Dior. Yeah. Yep. Are you familiar with it? Uh huh. It's very popular. But notice it's in a small pot. What you, what, you, what kind of dirt is in there? The soil is just regular bonsai soil, but. See how dense and compact it is? Yeah, really. That's why it's small. Okay. <laughs> they have it sitting in water all summer. Yeah, it's sitting in water all summer. <laughs> With the accessory plants, um, you don't want them skimpy. You want them dwarf and compact. Yeah. You do that by reducing the water, reducing fertilizer. Here's a, a juga. Maybe ruby, something that's irrigated. Oh, and, and, and those grow in tropical country? No, it's a perennial, woody perennial. It's a perennial. Okay. okay. Forgot to mention something. You still with us, Kathy? Yep. Yep, we're still here. For my taste of display. If the main tree is an asymmetrical pot, rectangular oval, this should be symmetrical pot, round, square, equal sided. If that's glazed, unglazed. Glazed, unglazed. <laughs> you, you, you always want to have avoid duplication. If you notice the scroll, you see the rainbows, right? Yes. Okay. You see the signature on the right? Yes. Okay. That's important too. This tree is going left to right. Left to right. The scroll, this dictates the direction, it goes from right to left. So everything towards the center. So the signature on the right corner 
yes. indicates that it's a right to lift. Correct. Correct. So if now, the signature was on the left corner, it would be the other way. Right. Now, Ooh. all of them don't work out this way. They all don't work this way. Now, that scroll was made for bonsai. That's why it's like that. But most scrolls are not designed for bonsai. So the artist designs it and signs it someplace artistically. So out of curiosity, how many scrolls do you have? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 75. Easy. Oh my. I've got a whole room, whole wall, 20 foot wall, stacked with my tables, one inside each other. But after, I use them all too. I use them all because I like to display. Yeah. Well, if you're going to get into displaying, then yes, you're going to have to end up with, you know, I mean, there's a whole art form in displaying in itself, including the different tables and the, and the stands. Ah. This is an incense burner. When I had on display in North Carolina, I had Christmas incense in there. And it was smoking out for display in winter. And you have stones. Wait, hold it up. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. This one's nice. So why will you use stones in your display? This one's artificial. No kidding. Yeah. Is Pretty it good. ceramic? No stone, carved. Uh-huh. Carved. Question. Yes. As we see it from our viewpoint, the tree and the scroll are touching each other. The accent plant is way off to the right. Is that intentional? Yes. I usually put this little bit. Oh. Bringing the scroll into the thing. Also, for my design, if this is 15 inches from the wall to here, this should be about 15 inches too. So the entire display is kind of centered. Are, 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 all, are all these parameters uh, based on Japanese rules of display? Some, some, not all. I'm not Japanese, I'm Greek. I noticed that. So I had, I've been there almost 60 years. So I, throughout the years, I've added certain um, kind of rules to my aesthetic preferences. So if you're judging a show, are you judging up based on your rules? No. No. Treat by itself. Now, gotcha. That's fair. Okay, this isn't good right here. This is in line with this. Okay, gotcha. So either more or less. And what's even worse is that the bottom of the scroll is even with that. These are just personal. Mm -hmm. Isn't it supposed to be? The bottom of the scroll, even with the bottom of the tokenoma? <laughs> no. It should be higher than the table. Uh, you don't want this here. Lower or higher is okay. Oh, here's the dies up for that. That, that stuck. No, the, who made it? Bob, one of my students, Bob Blankfield. Ah. Also, I have uh, books for the last, uh, I think, four uh, international or national shows. And uh, I always bring them to Florida with me. So I'll bring them to clubs someday if people want to see the different displays. The hot stone. Yeah. This one's carved. Uh huh. It takes a man 20 minutes to make these. <laughs> This one's real. There was an article in one of the uh, bonsai magazines about a man who, who makes these. Yeah, that's the man. This uh -huh. one's real. Yeah. I've got a better one too. So, 
all of this stuff is connected. There's more than boats like having a tree on your patio, but it depends on how deep you want to get involved. Some people enjoy it, which is fine. They got two or three trees. They go to a meeting once a month and they work on their trees. And sometimes they go to a bonsai show. That's fine. What isn't good is some people are sitting in their backyard for 30 years doing the same mistakes over and over again because they have a closed mind and don't try to listen and to improve. That's important. I've, I've noticed that uh, people get into bonsai for, uh, with different uh, ideas in mind. Myself, I like to shape material. Yeah. So I like to work with plants that are easy to keep alive and yet are, you know, acceptable to uh, shaping. So I end up with a lot of ficus neurofolia down here. Okay. We have another member who likes to uh, find plants. He's into the uh, Yamadori aspect of bonsai. So his thing is finding these amazing, you know, five inch diameter trunk a bougainvillea and putting them into a small container and keeping them alive. That's not collected. That's not? No. What is collected? You go to a mountain and collect something like a... Now you're back. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is it's getting interesting here, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me tell you. Before we started, I threw a couple pictures on Facebook of the alcove display. And in the past hour, so many people have liked it. No? How many people? Uh, check them. How many people like it? 23 and two. 23 and two. 50, 25 people have liked the display from all over the country. Oregon, Pennsylvania. All over. Ohio. What? Yeah. Any more questions? Anybody? I asked where you got you got your coarse perlite. At a greenhouse supply store. Okay. Check with the nursery. Try to get if possible. To what? Super, super course. Super course. Yeah. Perlite. Right. Now it's you, a, know, you get super course uh, vermiculite too. Yeah. But vermiculite crushes. Okay. Usually African violet growers use vermiculite. Okay. But the commercial, I don't know anybody who's using perlite anymore. <clears throat> Kathy? Yeah. Can I ask if any member in the club has a small drill or a Dremel? Uh, I burned up my Dremel and I need to do some sanding on a Bougainvillea. Yeah, I've got a couple of them. Okay. All right, I'll get with you later then. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, if you send me an email message, I'll send you the name of that uh, Trident Maple. Excellent. Trident. Appreciate that. Uh -oh. No problem. I, I was curious about uh, your regular bonsai mix. I mean, if you're using perlite in uh, your starting medium, what, what kind of bonsai mix do you favor? And I, I know it, it depends on what you're, you're providing. Well, it's everything, boon mix, which is per, um, um, pumice, akadama, and lava. Equal parts? Yes. Hey, 
answer the question about super perlite, it's on Amazon, $42 for four cubic feet. This is horse bottom soil, main soil, and Shohin bonsai soil. So you layer? Yes. Two, sometimes three. Which goes in first? The coarse bottom soil. We, we, we use a general mix down here that has lava, uh, an expanded clay, and some pine bark in it. And we adjust the amount of pine bark depending on what we're planting. We try to avoid pine bark, or avoid organic. It messes up everything. Yeah. The, but it works for you. Well, we only, because it is tropical mostly that we use, it helps to keep it moist. Sure. You're not having to water 80 times a day. Yep. Yep. For junipers, not so good. Now, do you like shallow pots or deep pots? Both. <laughs> I'd like you deep pots because in winter, the extra soil makes the trees a little bit more winter hardy. Kind of insulation. Yeah. And I would think maybe some Florida people would like deeper pots so they don't dry out as much. This is true. This is true. A shallow pot will hold water in the bottom a lot. Uh, okay. Also, we've, we've learned. But, but again, you have to, today, it's probably going to reach about 97, which it has for the last few days. And uh, you have to stay on top of it. Yeah. I watered three times yesterday. Yeah. You know, I put, I put my plants underneath an oak tree that I've got in the back for dappled sun and shade. And they're doing much better than sitting out in the uh, hot sun all day long. Right. Yeah. So. That's what they're doing. And, and about uh, 15 minutes ago, we had a minor downpour. So I won't have to go out and water for a while yet. We haven't any rain for about a week. Every, all their lawns are brown. Are they? Yeah. Yet they had all that, all that water in New York City. Yeah. New York City was pounded with inches and inches of water. We That's that tropical system. Yeah. Yeah. But my garden is green because we water. Yeah. <laughs> the um, bones that for sale and nursery stock, I watered twice a day automatically, starting at eight and again at three o'clock. And my good bonsai, I usually water two times a day, about 10 o'clock and about three o'clock. By hand? By hand. And the term I use is flooding until the water goes through. Yeah. I water the front of this tree. All the trees are arranged. They look good for watering. I'll show you. Uh oh. Here we go again. Yeah, he walked away. <laughs> yeah. I think he loses his connection when he walks away. If Marie's iPad anywhere? No. Rick, I've been grinding up my pine bark and I put a layer on top of some of the uh, you know, the bones I we'll say lava rock. Uh, it'll it'll act like a natural fertilizer that way. How do you grind it up? I have a uh, a grinder, <laughs> a that, a blender, and you put in a couple um, handfuls at a time. It takes a little time. Does your wife know you're doing this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, you can so buy it. Kind of blender. I have an old blender. Should I just? Right. Yeah, that? I got mine from uh, Goodwill for like three dollars. The blender. Yeah. Regular. Yeah, you're still not. You're still not coming up. Hmm. 
Can I hear her? Okay, now we hear you. Now we got you. You're uh, back. You're back. Do you see three trees? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I water the front of this hornbeam forest. No, the back of the hornbeam forest, front of the juniper, and the back of the um, blue pavilion. On the, other, on the other side, I water the front, the back, the front. So all the trees, there's a clear path right through. So I can hit this tree here, hit this tree here, hit this tree here. So a lot is very important. The most important aspect is running bone sets. Yoshimura always a uh, dry spot in the bone. So if you have it against a table or a wall or something, it's very difficult to get there, even if you flip it. It's got to be forceful. So, that's why so you're, that's you're promoting a dry spot? No, I'm avoiding the dry spot. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can flood this tree here. Fine. And I see it go around. But if I go on the other side, there's always a small dry spot here. So I got to get it on the other side as well. So you got to walk around and water all around. Right. Right. Yeah. And the table's got to be at the right height to get the water. If it's too high, it doesn't work. I'm going to leave. Thank you for this day. It was interesting. Bye, Ken. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've been about an hour and a half, folks, believe it or not. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, Kathy. Oh, this has been wonderful, Bill. I mean, this has been a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we had so many members to, to uh, sign in and check this out. Uh, we really enjoyed the questions and answers and the tours. So yeah, we that, that was wonderful. Now I got a water. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bill. Okay, Bill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Nice garden. Oh yeah. Yeah. Almost makes you want to move north. Thank you. No, almost maybe. Almost, yeah. Not quite. All right, folks. We're going to call it a day. This was wonderful. I'm glad you all showed up, and uh, we had a good showing. Thank See you, you next week, week. Kathy. Yeah. Thank nice you. Nice job. Okay, thank you. Right. See you next week. Go collect something, Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>